Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is talk about why, if you are chasing low drag, you really should forget about cam tails. Oh, forget? Heresy! How can you say that? Let's take a look. So people write to me things like this. Can you explain how cam tails can give such low drag? I'm fitting a cam back to my hatch. That will reduce drag. Why extend the back of the car when a cam tail will work much better? Well, first of all, what is being described? What is a cam tail? From Wikipedia, a cam back, also known as a cam tail or K-tail, is an automotive styling feature. The rear of the car slopes downwards before abruptly cutting off with a vertical surface. And notice the abrupt word there. Now, here are cars that purportedly use uh, cam tails. Uh, I had an Alpha Sud uh, TI as my second car and it had that, that flat surface at the back and it really was abruptly cut off. You can see the Fiat, you can see these other cars and even in a modern car, you can see it in the current Prius. So what's it all about? Well, let's go back to cam, Wunderbald cam in the 1930s. And these were the very special aerodynamic cars that he created. They were extraordinarily slippery compared with cars of the era. They're not necessarily so slippery when we look at them now, but back then they certainly were. Now, if we look at his three prototype cars, none of them actually has what we'd now call a cam back. So this one slopes down and then it's got quite a gentle curve at the back, quite a rounded trailing edge. This one slopes down and has a round trailing edge. And this one slopes down and has a round trailing edge. So the definition of what we're calling a cam tail or a cam back, that abrupt cut off, seems to have varied from what he was actually doing. Now, this has come to a head just recently because a really excellent SAE, Society of Automotive Engineering, uh, Engineers paper has just been released, released just last year, and it's a really unusual paper is because it looks at some of that history with modern eyes and modern analysis. And it's called Streamline Tails, the effect of truncation, cutting off in other words, on aerodynamic drag. Now, unfortunately, that's a paper that's not available freely. It costs about 30 US dollars. But if you're really interested in low drag, it is a paper to buy. It's quite complex. It will need lots of readings to get uh, many of the key points. I'm covering only one of their key points in today's video. So what do they say about cam tails, about truncating uh, elongated tails, streamlined trails? Uh, tails, I mean, it's very, very interesting. One of the things they say is this, CAM's research was conducted at a time when most cars which aspired to have low drag followed the Jurey design philosophy. Now here's a Jurey car and you can see it curves all the way back down there quite steeply at the back. Now you can see just looking at it, you're going to get separated flow. The airflow is not going to be able to follow that steep downwards contour. It's going to separate somewhere along here. Now what Cam proposed, and again this is a quote from the paper, is that by cutting off the body where the flow separated would create a more practical shape. In other words, if the flow was separating here, the rest of the bodywork behind that separated flow wasn't doing anything for the aerodynamics, it was just making the car longer. And so, for example, if the flow separates there, we could then make that final surface vertical and it wouldn't change the drag. Now, that's quite different to how people often think of it today, because there it's being referred to by CAM as where the flow is separating, we might as well cut it off there. It's not reducing drag, it's just making a more practical shape of car. Now, the other thing that the paper makes quite clear is there's another misconception, and that is that the cutoff tail achieves the same low drag as a fully streamlined a tail. In other words, if you had the flow attached all the way down to a smaller base area, that actually is not going to give the same low drag as if it were cut off. It will be better. Cam didn't make the claim that cutting off the tail gives the same low drag as if the tail was elong elongated with attached flow. Now, a summary then, as shown in this paper, the available limited data on this subject shows that drag increases as a streamlined tail is truncated. 
Drag goes up as you chop that tail off, assuming you have attached flow down that tail. Now that is dramatically different to how people are referring to it today, advice in discussion groups and so on. So lowest drag typically comes from having the smallest base area, in other words, the area of the car exposed to the wake. So long, gently tapering tails are good and in comparison, cutoff tails are bad. There is no magic in a cam tail as we refer to it today. Now, so what was cam actually achieving? Well, if we look at this first vehicle, we can see that the wake, if the tail didn't taper down, the wake, the base area exposed to the wake would go from the red line to at least down to the yellow line and perhaps even lower depending on the flow under the car. By tapering the shape of the car downwards, cam decreased the wake to only being that area, the base area exposed to the wake. So he's dropped the base area exposed to the wake by something like a third. Now notice that he's then saying, or we are then saying, looking at this, that there's a lot less area exposed to the wake, the base area, and so the drag will be lower. So what cam is actually doing, was actually doing, is keeping attached flow down to a smaller base area. Now these days, we would put a little lip or spoiler at that point to get clean separation at that point. And of course, you could then cut it off if you wished, but why would you bother anyway? It's, 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 it's going to be in a modern car, a very, very small area. So what do you learn from that? What can we learn from that? Have attached flow, I left the word flow out, attached flow to the smallest base cross-sectional area, cleanly separate at that point, and a rear spoiler lip will likely decrease both drag and lift. And if we look with new eyes at the Prius, which we saw earlier as an example of a cam tail, we can see they keep attached flow down to a much, much smaller cross-sectional area than if they were separating at the highest part of the car. And they have a flat area there, which will cause some pressure regain. It acts as a de facto spoiler. If they lifted that lip up a little bit more, they'd get even more pressure here. Uh, but, but it's a juggling act. It's certainly a juggling act. But here, you can see they're actually following Cam's original philosophy to keep flow attached to the smallest area. And beyond that, you might as well cut it off. There's no magic, though, in a Cam tail. It doesn't automatically give drag. If this Prius had an extended tail that went right over here above my head and right over here, it would get even lower drag. Cutting that off doesn't give the same drag. It gives increased drag, but obviously Toyota are making a practical car. Can't have a tail three or four or five meters long behind the car. If you want to read more about this sort of information, modifying the aerodynamics of your road car, if you want to be able to test the modifications that you are carrying out on the road, car aerodynamic testing for road and track. Thank you.